everybody. Welcome to Zone Defense. Be sure to follow us on Spotify at Zone Defense Podcast, on Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Zone Defense Podcast. And be sure to ring that bell to get post notifications. Also, hit that like button down below and drop a comment and let us know your thoughts on today's topic. Today, Chris, Rowan, and I will be diving into our preview and pick them for the NFL Conference Championships. How's it going, guys? I'm good, Drew. I'm excited to get into the pick em. Last week, there were some exciting games that we might talk about and some storylines also that follow on to today. So we're going to take those notes as well and uh, let's get it going. Yeah, uh, you know, I just don't just want to mention my 4-0 sweep last week. You know, it just it felt really good to get all the picks right. I felt like you guys kind of handed me a couple of those, though, the Bills and the I believe the other one was the uh, the Packers. Yeah, so we could... Uh, you know, uh, just didn't want to didn't want to miss on uh, you know, just my perfect weekend. You guys mediocre, uh, back on top, like where I belong, where I was for most of the regular season, besides the last week. But yeah, we can uh, we can get into it now. I'm ready to uh, start this off. Talk about these really fun games this weekend. But uh, you know, we can't start it off without talking about some some unfortunate injuries first. And obviously, the big news of the day: Patrick Mahomes. Uh, he had that weird – one of the weirdest sits, honestly, I've ever seen on a football field where he kind of like – he didn't really get tackled at all with his head. It was more of like a stinger almost or something like that, but he, he got up like wobbly and stuff. So, And you could even see when he ran into the tunnel, he looked totally fine after. It was really weird. It was literally like a, a, a minute or two while he was on the field. He looked like he was absolutely lost. After that, I, I thought he was going to come back in, but, you know, after uh, – you know, you you evaluate probably that video or whatever of him getting up. You probably couldn't send him back in there. But unf- fortunately enough, anything can happen. You know, uh, this guy went in and just absolutely lit it up. Uh, now, he had a, a, a nice punt to the uh, Browns in the end zone. With all jokes. But other than that, he, he didn't look too bad. He had a nice mahomes S scramble as well to almost get the first down and then throw it. a crazy touchdown pass. Or not touchdown. Crazy first down conversion on fourth down to end the game and that was it was good to see for chad honey you know a former machine guy uh, it really impressive stuff but uh lamar jackson unfortunately went out with a concussion didn't return that was unfortunate for him pretty much after he threw that pick six the game was over so um stinks for him but you know good year for him he was able to get his first playoff win you know they're going to try to build on that next year and then uh brashad breland had the uh he had a concussion as well. Not sure what his status is for this week, but we'll have to see about that. Jedrick Wills, the ankle injury. Don't really know the severity, but uh, assuming he'll be fine going into next year. But he went out like first play of the game, so that was a big loss for the Browns as well. Antonio Brown, this one's interesting as well. It's like a minor knee injury. Don't know if he's going to miss the game or not this week. But I assume he plays personally. We'll have to see about that, but uh, you know, uh, definitely an- another weapon for Tom Brady to have at least, and he he's definitely going to need him this week against the Packers. And then, lastly, I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you guys saw it as well. AJ Brown uh, announced, I believe it was on Instagram, uh, double knee surgery. Played basically the whole year through it. Uh, the video he was like high on some painkillers or something like that, and somebody on his Twitter came out and announced it in the third person that. He, that he apologizes for that, but or in the first person that he apologized, they were like, AJ apologizes for this. I don't know who it was, but it's interesting stuff to see, I guess. But you know, Brown uh, had a really good season despite having two knee injuries. So it's gonna be really interesting. Honestly, honestly for fantasy, it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes in drafts because you know he was disappointing to start the year. He really was awesome after that. And you know, besides Arthur Smith leaving, not really anything else should be changing. Maybe no Corey Davis as well, actually. So, I mean, uh, he could be in for a, a big workload next year. And, you know, if his knees aren't hurting, he's probably going to be even better. So, he could be a guy to target in your fantasy drafts. But uh, we'll have to see about that. And then next we'll talk about the uh, retirees. We'll start with Drew Brees first. You know, obviously it didn't end in the way he wanted it to, but he is probably going to retire. We'll have to see about that. It seemed like a retirement to me. I expect him to do similarly to what Philip Rivers just did today, which is announce his retirement. And, uh, you know, for Rivers, a, a great career, obviously. Drew, I'm sure, wants to spend the entire episode talking about how awesome he was. But uh, we're going to we're gonna spin it a different way. I'll let Drew start it off, and we'll let Roman go after. What do you guys think the Colts quarterback situation is going to be next season? I'll let you go first, Drew. Go ahead. Yeah, so first and foremost, congrats to Philip Rivers on a great career, Hall of Famer. I got to get that in there real quick. Um, in terms of the Colts, though, um, 
this is still very fresh news. So um, I, I have to like really dive in and, and look at the options. I think the most obvious answer would be Deshaun Watson um, because he wants out of Houston. He uh, isn't responding to calls um, and they're probably going to be forced to trade him similarly to last season when they were forced to trade DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I don't know the likelihood of that because the Texans and the Colts are obviously in the same division. And I don't imagine the Texans wanting to trade Watson to a divisional foe in the Colts. Um, so then you look at other options. Uh, maybe they, they trade up in the draft. They get one of the top prospects there. Um, and a Trey Lance, someone like that. Um, or they could go after and get like another veteran guy like Cam Newton, um, who's going to be out there in the free agency stack. Or we're Lions fans. Um, they could go after Matthew Stafford as well. So I, I really think any of those options is fine. Um, however, they are going to need to hit the quarterback position because this is a roster that I think is really just a quarterback away from being really, really good. Um, they have a good, they have a really, they have a good defense. Um, they're receiving core. Yeah. T Y Hilton isn't great, but if you get a full year of Zach Pascal next year, you get Michael Pittman Jr. in his second year. Um, those are two really good weapons they have. They also have Jonathan Taylor on the ground along with Naeem Hines. So, they're really just a quarterback away. So it's a really important decision for them to make. Um, but in terms of where they go, um, I don't really know. I think Stafford would probably be the best fit there um, because he's he's a veteran, but he's not super old. Um, I just don't know what they would be able to give up um, to the Lions for them to, uh, to get that. So Roman, though, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to pull off a Watson trade. I don't think the Texans would send them to an end-division rival. However, I do think there are some veterans they could go after, like you said, Stafford. <laughs> Um, Cam Newton, that would be a signing, though. They might potentially go after Garoppolo. I think that kind of makes sense, depending on what San Francisco wants to do for their future. Um, but this is kind of a boring answer. But I will say that, you know, they obviously Jacoby Brissett was their backup, and he hasn't too far removed from being a starter in the league. So maybe they'll evaluate what they have in him first before making a move because I don't think he necessarily is awful. He's definitely serviceable. Um, but they'll see what they have in him and then make a move according to what he looks like. And then, like you said, in the draft, they can go after it's Trey Lance. I don't think Mac Jones will go in the first round, but if he's the only quarterback available or the best quarterback available at their pick, uh, I can see Jones going there in the first round. So they definitely have some options, but you know, they'll have to probably make a trade and give up assets or make a signing for a veteran. Yeah, I mean, the Colts are one of the smartest organizations in the entire league, so I don't think we really need to tell them what to do. But, uh, you know, in my opinion, I really think it would be dumb for them to uh, to not go after a good quarterback. I think Brissett is a cop-out for them. I, I just don't really – this roster is built for the Super Bowl. I mean, at least at least to compete. I mean, this team was good this year. I mean, Rivers was fine, but they, they can definitely improve at the quarterback position. I think – I think the Matthew Stafford trade makes a lot of sense for both teams. I mean, this is a guy that uh, has been in a. I mean, I I love Stafford, but he's not, he's not. They're not going to win anything with him here. Obviously, it's it's not going to it's not going to work out. They don't put enough talent around him, a or they just don't get it done when he has talent around him. So, this is a guy that needs a perfect new change of scenery. It really isn't even that much different because it's another blue and blue and white team uh, in the AFC where we don't have to play him. That's all that uh, matters. Yeah, right. Uh, he's got. They've got weapons. They've got a good offensive line. It's a perfect situation for him to play good football, play Matthew Stafford football, where he takes a lot of deep shots. He also could run the ball as well. So I think I think that is a perfect fit. I like the Jimmy G take, even though this is slightly more of a cop out because I think Stafford gives them a legitimate Super Bowl chance. I don't know if Jimmy G does, but at least he. I think he's at least an upgrade over Jacoby Brissett personally. But I think them going after a guy like Brissett, Cam Newton. I I, don't, I think those need to be ruled out. I mean. If they're smart, if they do it, I think that's a dumb move, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, they could also go after Carson Wentz too. I think that's a legitimate yeah. option. There is a relationship there with Frank Reich, who's their head coach now was formerly one of the offensive coaches for Philadelphia. He's actually the guy um, that a lot of people think is responsible for Philadelphia's great offense because once he left, that was when Doug Peterson and the Eagles started to kind of teeter off a little bit. So um, that's a, that's a move that could work. Um, I mean, we saw last time Reich and Wentz were paired up together. Wentz, almost, Wentz would have been an MVP had he not gotten injured. So um, I think I think that could be maybe the best option, um, if not for Stafford. Yeah, I like I like Wentz to Indianapolis as well, and I think that was kind of what the narrative was going for until they fired uh, Doug Peterson. So maybe they're more likely to keep Wentz, but if yeah. they get a good package, they can't refuse. And I definitely see that as a good landing spot for Wentz. And also one more thing, uh, I just went on Twitter real quick, and Stafford is currently first on on trending. So 
clearly the rumors are circulating and the Colts to the Stafford to the Colts are in full force. Yeah. I mean, hopefully for, for his sake, our sake, we can get some assets back, which we desperately need. Clearly the Ross are just totally void of talent. Um, and the Colts need a Super Bowl. So, you know, getting Stafford gives them a legitimate Super Bowl contending, both offense and defense. And, I mean, Rivers, I mean, honestly, was close to that. He was solid this year. But I, he he made some mistakes early on. He he had a hard time moving the offense for parts of the season. But, you know, he, he did pick it up at the end. But Stafford, I think, comes in, instantly gives them a boost. All their weapons are, are solid. I think Pittman Jr. takes a massive step forward if he gets a guy like Stafford. I think T.Y. Hilton goes back to being really relevant. Uh, Jonathan Taylor gets in a, a, a bump as well. I think this entire offense would just move, click a lot better. I think Stafford fits perfectly in this offense, a little bit more mobile, still has a good offensive line. I really like the move, and I, and I hope we, this isn't the last time we talk about it because I think it's going to be interesting. But uh, we'll get into the next thing. Bucks designate. This is potentially huge news for the Bucks. Uh, Vita Vea returned from the IR, and their defense was unbelievable with him still out there. So I think. Um, if they get him back, I think that the Packers are going to have absolutely just total problems running the ball at all. I don't think they're going to have anything get anything going on the ground. It just kind of depends on if uh, – I mean, Aaron Rodgers will be great, obviously. It just kind of – they got to hope they can turn him over a couple times to win this game. And then next we'll talk about just kind of brush over because there isn't really anything finalized yet. But the new format for the 2021 Combine, there's not going to be in-person workouts. So it's, it's going to be – I think the draft is going to be a little bit more variable. That's why I think a lot of the quarterbacks are going to go early because they have the most. Uh, I mean, I feel like it's the easiest position to at least you know, evaluate without without the combine. Or I think the combine is at least important for the uh, for the quarterback position personally. But we'll have to see about that. I think it's going to be very interesting in the off season. What I think mean, there's going to be some awful picks. There's going to be some good picks. We'll just have to see. It's going to be def- definitely going to be different. But uh, we'll get to the last thing. Uh, we'll start with the Ravens releasing Mark Ingram. I mean, it was pretty much inevitable. I mean, they, he was a healthy scratch last week. Uh, he's been getting less and less playing time throughout the season. Uh, it just seems like it was about time for that. But uh, lastly, we'll, we'll all, I'll get everybody involved again for this. Uh, Jared Goss, Sean McVay, tension. I mean, I, I don't really know what what the tension is, but I guess they need marriage counseling in the offseason or something like that. It's be interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, Drew, do you think Jared Goff is back with the Los Angeles Rams? Or do you think this team goes in a different direction? This could be uh, a team potentially looking for uh, you know a new quarterback. What do you think is going to happen with them? Well, basically what happened was, um, obviously with, with Walford and uh, – Walford starting over over Goff in the playoffs. Uh, McVeigh, I guess, making it known that he wanted to go with Walford instead of instead of Goff. Um, and then in his like p- end of the season like press conference, uh, McVeigh they asked McVeigh about the quarterback position, about whether Goff would be on the roster, whether he'd be the starter moving forward. And typically in those situations, the the coach always is like, "Oh yeah, well he'll be here. He's our guy, whether that's the truth or not." And McVeigh straight up said, "Well, we have to evaluate the position. We have to evaluate everything. Blah blah blah." Um, and I guess Goff is uh, Goff's camp has also come out and said how the the relationship is very fractured. So. Um, I mean, I th- I would love for Goff to not be on this team because I think this is a team that's in a very similar spot to the uh, Indianapolis Colts, where they're just they're in even a worse spot because I think Rivers was definitely better than Goff this season. Um, but this is a team. I mean, for God's sakes, they made it to the divisional round and they were pretty competitive for the, against the Packers for most of the game um, up, up until the the very f- the final quarter, really. Um, <clears throat> and they're really just a quarterback away from being a really good championship level team. So I hope Goff leaves. Um, and this is another team that could go after a guy like a Stafford, like a, um, who's the other guy? Wentz, Carson Wentz, maybe Cam Newton, even though I, I think he's kind of washed at this point, at least from what we saw in New England this season. Um, they could also trade up in the draft, get a quarterback. Um, I think, I, I know I don't hate on Goff as much as Chris does. Um, but I also think that they he, he's a below average quarterback uh, more times than not. And if they are able to find an upgrade, I think the Rams could be clear cut Super Bowl contenders in the NFC without questions. But um, in ter- and so I, I hope he's off the team. It seems like he's probably going to it's 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 going that way. Um, but who knows? They could do a Mitchell Trubisky situation where they get another guy in the in the in the quarterback room and they have them battle it out. But who knows? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. 
Yeah, for me, I, I think Goff's situation, I think he's actually pretty secure. I don't think Wolford is going to be a significant threat to him in the future. And we kind of say this with a bunch of other quarterbacks. That the, the Rams kind of gave him a huge contract. It's going to be hard to move. They do want to get rid of him. So that's obviously the first obstacle. Secondly, I think there's no there's not going to be any competition next year for Goff. She, he should be the clear-cut starter. I think McVay and uh, Goff will be able to work out their problems, whatever tension there was, um, because – it was honestly justified that Wolford started the playoff game because Goff was still hurt, and he came in anyways and still had a, won them the game, basically. So I think there's not much to read into this. Uh, I think they're going to be fine going into next year. I don't think Goff is going to leave, but if he has another down year or is playing significantly worse than the contract, I think you can definitely talk about then of him getting moved or the Rams going into a different direction because this draft won't be much help to them because they don't have a first-round pick once again. It's going to be like the fourth or fifth year to really haven't had a first round pick. So they don't really have a lot to do in the draft. And I don't think they're going to sign anyone. So it should be Goff's team moving forward. Yeah, it shouldn't be Goff's team moving forward, but it probably will be. Uh, I think he's absolutely awful as a quarterback, obviously. I mean, you know my opinions on him. I personally think they are going to bring in another guy. I think potentially an interesting name would be a Jimmy G because I don't think it would take a lot. Not that he's a lot better than Jared Goff, but I think he is better than him at least. And they could run kind of a similar offense. I think Jimmy G would execute it a little bit better. That's just my personal belief. But I I really – I mean, honestly, I don't even know because he's nothing special as a quarterback. But, yeah, I mean – I don't really know what they're supposed to do. I, I think they definitely want to move him. No one's taking him for anything. I mean, I don't know what I would pay to get Jared Goff on my roster, but it's probably not more than a seventh-round pick, especially with that contract. And, uh, and I mean, I think they're kind of just stuck with him. So I, I do agree with Roman yeah. in that sense. I don't think they should be because I think he's terrible, and I think he already has proven that he can't, he isn't going to live up to anything close to the contract. Uh, but – it just, I mean, it is what it is for them. I don't really know what else is going to happen. Obviously, Sean McVay isn't going anywhere. I think if someone is going to leave, it's going to be Jared Goff. I think there's definitely a chance he is gone or is not their starter next year, but I don't really see how it happens with this roster. And like like you said, no first-round pick either, so it's not like they're drafting one this year either. But, yeah, we'll have to see what happens this offseason. going to be interesting to see. I think this could be just McVay voicing the same uh, irritations that we're voicing right now where he wishes it wasn't Goff's team, but as you guys both said, there's really nothing they can do with that contract. I think a guy they could actually bring in, now that I think about it a little bit more, is a guy I mentioned while I was talking about Goff is Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, that's a guy they could yeah. bring in. Uh, he's probably going to be cheaper than Garoppolo because Garoppolo is also making quite a bit of cash, um, and they don't have to trade anything for him. They can just sign him, and that's – I mean – I know he's not a great quarterback either, but we saw he was pretty good there in Chicago down the stretch. Not pretty good, but he was at least average. Um, bring him in, get some com- get some competition going. Um, I mean, it's better. Having Trubisky, I guess, is better than not having anybody. But uh, that's that's a name that they could maybe go after. Who knows? Yeah, I was actually going to mention that as well. I kind of forgot about it but when you initially brought it up. I was like, yeah, why don't they just sign Trubisky? And I think that actually makes a lot of sense for them. I mean, Trubisky, like I said, not, not a quarterback that I think is necessarily – better than Jared Goff, but he's definitely shown flashes over the last couple of years. I think he's done more of that than, than a guy like Goff, who's been kind of been like maybe not as bad, but more like steadily below average rather than being like either awful or actually pretty good, which is what I see in Trubisky. Maybe McVay could see yeah. that he's a little bit more mobile, could fit their offense a little bit better with all their play action, motion moves and stuff. They, I feel like they need a little bit more mobility at the quarterback position. I actually really like that idea, Drew. I think breaking news, the – the Rams are going to sign Mitchell Trubisky in the offseason. Would actually a move, yeah. be a move, and it's not. Sense. It's not as obviously not as good of a fix as getting a Stafford or giving a, getting a Wentz or drafting somebody. Um, but as you guys said, they don't have any draft capital. They don't have any actual capital in terms of money uh, to go out and spend on a guy, or and they're not going to be able to move that contract in golf. So given all those limitations, Trubisky is probably their their best option there. But um, unless you guys have anything more to add? We can jump in, in here to the conference championship pick 'em. 
Um, so starting things off, we will start with the AFC Championship game, um, which is actually the late game on Sunday night, starting at 6.40 p.m. Um, it's the Buffalo Bills versus the Kansas City Chiefs. The Bills, I believe, this is their first conference championship appearance since 1995. Um, and for the Chiefs, this is obviously their third consecutive appearance in the conference championship game. So uh, two teams both coming in with, obviously, momentum coming off wins, but I would say neither has looked super convincing um in the bills either their bills wins or the chiefs their one win last week but uh since chris took the lead over me and roman after uh, last week's games he will start us off here with his bills chiefs pick yeah um this in my opinion is the legitimate super bowl of the year i cannot this is the game i've been most excited to watch i was hoping this would happen in the playoffs i am so excited for this game i think this is the two best teams in the entire league uh, that being said, I know Mahomes most likely is going to play. I am still going to go with the Buffalo Bills in this one. I think they're going to back to the Super Bowl first time in forever. First time, long time. But this is a team that, in my opinion, offense has been clicking throughout the season. They can't run the ball, but that really doesn't really matter. This game is going to be – I think this is going to be a borderline – at least definitely going to have the looks of a shootout because I think both these offenses are going to be throwing the ball a ton. Uh the addition of Clyde Edwards Alaire can make a difference for the Chiefs if he's back next week, and I think he will be. So that maybe they'll try to mix it up a little bit more. I expect the Bills to go pass heavy like they usually do and let Josh Allen cook again. And I think the Bills defense is playing some good football right now, too. And uh I really think uh it gives them an advantage in this one. So I'm gonna go with the Buffalo Bills. Uh honestly, either team that wins this game, I'm gonna be cheering for in this Super Bowl. I like both these teams. I think it's gonna be a really fun game. I wish I could both meet up in the Super Bowl, but this is based, this is the game I've been most excited for of the playoffs and definitely hasn't changed now. It's going to be an incredible game. Live up to the expectations. With the Bills, it's concerning a little bit because I think over the two games, they've been outgained by a combined 200 yards. So that's a little concerning, the fact that they could have easily lost either of their first two matchups. However, you got to give credit to the fact that they did find a way to win. Um, I would say against the Colts in the first round, they won because of their offense. Their defense didn't play great. And then last week against the Ravens, their offense didn't play great, but their defense, as you said, Chris, looked really, really good. And that was a big reason as to why I picked the Ravens last week um, because I, I didn't think the Bills' defense was up to snuff, but they really played well, obviously having that, that game-changing, game-sealing, really, uh, pick in the end zone and then the subsequent return for a touchdown. So um, <clears throat> I really like this Bills team. I'm going to be rooting for them because I'm not a huge Chiefs fan. I think if Mahomes doesn't play, because it seems like it's still not entirely clear whether he's going to play or not, at least at the time we're recording, um, I think it's an easy Bills win. Um, however, even if Mahomes does play, I still like the Bills just a little bit more. Um, I just think there's something missing with this Chiefs team um, for whatever reason. In the regular season, they didn't seem great. Um, and, and even last week, yeah, it was the Browns, um, and everyone was expecting them to kind of just – it was it's people. some people were expecting it to be a close game, some people were expecting it to be a blowout. Um, but they really let them hang around for the most part. And if it wasn't for that controversial touchback um, and everything like that, I felt like the Browns outplayed the Chiefs for the most part when Mahomes was on the field. It wasn't just Chet Henney coming in, so the Browns made it competitive. They outplayed them for large stretches, even when Mahomes was out there. Um, I still don't love the Chiefs' defense, and this Bills' offense is obviously much, much better than the Browns. So um, I just, I don't know. It just seems like it's the Bills year. Um, they got all the positive momentum. All I see on Instagram is just Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen loving each other. So um, it <laughs> seems like it's the Bills year. I do really wish this game would have been in Buffalo because I think the Bills Mafia, yep. that would have been awesome to see. But um, I just, I, I really like the Bills in this one. But this might be an easy, uh, easy uh, gimme here for, for Roman, but uh, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. I think the Bills are going to have to score 30-plus points in this game to win. And to be honest, their offense has been a little bit underwhelming the past couple of weeks. But I think they get back on track this week. Uh, to me, regardless of Mahomes is playing, I don't think he'll be clearly at 100%. Not only is he dealing with a concussion, but we didn't mention he's also dealing with a toe injury. So that could possibly hamper yeah. his running ability and overall like ability to get out of the pocket. So I think whether he plays or not, uh, the Bills' defense – will be facing a less mobile quarterback, whether it's Mahomes or Henny. Uh, I'm going to go with the Bills as well because uh, I've, I've been kind of rooting for them all season, and I'm not going to just take the opportunity to pick the Chiefs just because I want to win. I'm going to take the Bills because I believe in them. Wow. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised. I thought uh, at least one of us would pick the Chiefs. Um, 
but yeah, Roman, I'm glad you mentioned it there with all the, the extra injuries Mahomes, aside from the, the obviously serious concussion that he suffered last week. Um, he's also dealing with that toe injury. Um, and yeah, the defense isn't great either. It's going to be a high scoring game, most likely, especially if Mahomes is out there because I don't really trust either defense. Um, but I, I do hope for the, the game's sake uh, that Mahomes is healthy enough to be at least at close to 100%, just because, as Chris mentioned, this is going to be a really, really fun game to watch on Sunday night. But I'll just, I'll um, like to, I just want to get your thoughts on something. I saw online that uh, Colin Cowherd said that they should postpone the game until Mahomes is completely healthly, which I don't completely agree with. They just got to play with whatever happens, happens. Uh, I'm sure you guys agree. Yeah, that's just – I like Cowherd, uh, but that's just him saying stuff. I, I, I mean, I can understand what he's saying because it's like what I just said. Like it would have been great if you could watch the game with the two of them, but like you can't do that, right? You had to play with what no. you did. We saw it a few years ago when uh, Kevin Love dislocated his shoulder and Kyrie was hurt in the finals um, with LeBron, and he they were undermatched. I mean, we see it all the time, especially in a season like this. We see it with COVID. For God's sakes, the Browns two weeks ago – didn't have Kevin Stefanski in their offensive line or even last week they lost a bunch of their offensive line. So um, yeah, if that was possible, I'd love to see every team go at full strength, but it's just, it's not unless you want the no. season to go on. Actually injuries happen week one. So it's like, and then if you do that, then you could be like, Oh, well the Panthers. Oh, well Christian McCaffrey, let's reschedule all our games when Chris, so when Christian McCaffrey's back, so then we can win more. It's just uh, it's just a never ending circle. So it's, it's a dangerous game that Coward's trying to play here. Yeah, I mean, I obviously I agree. That's a ridiculous statement, my coward, and it's a guy that just is out there for the money, trying to get these hot takes out there. I, I'm not gonna lie, this isn't a Colin Coward podcast. That guy's a clown. I'm not really a big fan of him. Uh, I mean, I don't really like a lot of those talk show guys. So it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, he's he's whatever, but it's just a guy that just spits out ridiculous takes all the time, and and just sounds like he's never watched it. A single sports sporting event in his entire life so it is what it is i say we move on now obviously he's gonna obviously though he's good at his job because uh, we're talking about it right now and yeah. uh that's what he does that's the whole point of it is to get clicks to get takes to get people talking about it regardless of whether we agree with him or not but yeah that's just outlandish um doesn't even make any sense but anyway uh we'll jump over to the nfc now this will be the first game of uh championship sunday um at 305 um it's the brady rogers matchup this is the thing this is the game i know about you guys but this is the game i've been looking forward to for like a decade it seems like i thought these teams the brady and rogers would inevitably meet in the super bowl between the packers and the patriots um obviously this isn't the super bowl but it's still going to be a really fun game in this conference championship playing for a bit in the super bowl um we all know brady's history i think this is what is 14th conference championship game at six Super Bowls with the Pat Pats. He's been there, done that. This is not really a new circumstance for him, but with Rodgers, he's been, I think this is his fifth appearance, but he's only one in three. Um, this is his first conference championship in Lambeau. Um, so both teams coming off really nice wins. Bucks over the Saints, Packers over the Rams. Um, should be another really entertaining game. Um, I think this is the potential to be almost probably maybe even a better game than the Bills Chiefs game, depending on the availability of Mahomes. Um, but nevertheless, it's probably going to be close once again. So, Chris, who do you like in this matchup? Yeah, I think this is. I mean, both these these championship games are honestly pro probably the teams that I wanted to be in this situation. I think the Bucks and the Packers, despite the Bucks' record being a little bit worse, I think they're one of the best teams in the NFC. A team that definitely, obviously, I mean, they beat the Saints. They obviously deserve to be here. Uh, that being said, it's in Lambeau. Aaron Rodgers playing some great football right now. I'm going to go with the uh, Packers in this one. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I think the Packers are the better team, despite me wanting the Bucks to win. I want to see Brady back in the Super Bowl again, despite him already having seven rings or six rings. It's, it's insane that I want to see him back, but I really do. I want to see him win with a different team. I think it's going to be tough against Rodgers. I think Rodgers, like you said for the Bills, I think they're kind of just – I think they're meant to be in the Super Bowl, man. I mean, uh, Rodgers playing some of the best football of his entire career. I would argue the best football of his career, and they've looked impressive so far. In the uh, at least in the uh, against the Rams, it looked extremely impressive, in my opinion. They pretty much dominated that game from the start. I, I think it's going to be a good game, a really good game, uh, back and forth. Similarly to the other game, I think there's going to be a pretty high scoring game. Uh, but I, I inevitably, I think the Packers are going to make it to the Super Bowl and take on the Buffalo Bills. I mean, yeah, it's, that's a reasonable take because this is 
when we look back, this is going to be the Aaron Rodgers season, I think. He's most likely going to win the MVP. When you take into account everything that happened uh, leading up to the season with uh, him coming off an injury, uh, the, them drafting uh, a quarterback in the first round, all the controversy there, and then he comes out and leads the Packers to, I, I mean, one of the best re- best record in the NFC, one of the best records in the entire NFL. As I said, he had ridiculous stats. I think he really only had one bad game, and it was against this Bucks team. Um, and then also the second half of that Colts game a, a few weeks back as well. Um, but other than that, he was near perfection. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to take the Bucks in this one, um, even though I think it, – it, it's it's lining up to be a Packers game to win. Um, they are the favorite, and Rodgers rarely has been the favorite when it comes to these conference championship games. Um, but come on, it's Tom Brady. I know it's cold weather. I know it's Lambeau. But uh, I think we all collectively forgot that Brady played in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium for, what, 20 years? Um, so he's used to the cold weather. Um, even if guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, um, even if they're not maybe used to the cold weather, you still got Rob Gronkowski, who was also with Brady and Foxborough, and even Antonio Brown. I know he's a little bit questionable now with the injury, but he played in Pittsburgh, which is also not a, a warm climate to play in. So these are guys that are used to it. Um, their defense really stepped up, looked really good. I think their defense is better than um, the Green Bay defense, um, even though Kenny Clark had a really nice game against the Rams. Um the Buccaneers are clearly a better offense. I think they're going to be able to, to reap the benefits against this Packers defense. Um, and I think the Bucks defense will do enough to limit Green Bay. However, it's going to be a really close game. It would not surprise me if Green Bay wins um, because they were able to, even though Aaron Donald wasn't there, they were able to pick apart a better defense in the Rams than the Bucks. But um, I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair, and I just it's hard to bet against Brady when it comes, in, when it comes to January. But Roman, it looks like you're going to be the tiebreaker here between us. Yeah, it would be a nice storyline if Aaron Rodgers got another Super Bowl. As a Lions fan, I wouldn't I wouldn't hate it. He's been actually pretty likable this past season, considering that there hasn't been a whole lot of competition between the Lions and, and the Packers uh, in their two matchups this season. However, I will go with the Bucs as well, because I do think they're more equipped to win. Uh, they have more weapons on offense, and if they get Vita Vea back, I think it's a big help for that defensive line as well, because the Packers are just figuring out their three-headed monster at running, rushing attack and uh, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, and they even got AJ Dillon in there for a good portion of that game. So I think just as just as when they hit low momentum, I think the Bucks are going to stop them. Uh, if they can take out uh, Devontae Adams, which is easier said than done, Jalen Ramsey couldn't, uh, and that would be on Carlton Davis and Sean Murphy Button Murphy Bunting to take out Devontae Adams, which will be a tall task. So there's definitely some problems that will face the Tampa Bay defense, but like you said, Drew, it all comes back to Tom Brady. He's experienced. Uh, I think him winning another championship in the NFC, though, I think that's a much bigger storyline, a much more impressive storyline um, for his legacy, although he doesn't technically need it. Um, I think he's going to win this game at least and get another shot at another Super Bowl, um, which we project to be the Buffalo Bills against. I uh, It actually reminded me of something. I told him it's funny. Once Brady made the NFC championship game, it was like, Teams at NFC Championship appearance um, in like the last twenty years, and it was it was like zero, and it was like the Lions, all these other crap teams, and then it was Tom Brady, and it was one, and then it talked about how many seasons that they've played in the NFC, and obviously the Lions have played the entire their entire time in the NFC, and the and Brady only had one season, so he's one for one. So it just shows you how good Brady is at doing in either conference, and how inept some of the other franchises in the nfc are including our hometown lions but um, do you guys have anything else you, you want to add yeah, the cowboys too yeah um do you guys have anything else you want to add about the um conference championship games or anything like that i, I will just quickly add that I, i'm sure we're all underestimating the chase and they're probably gonna blow out the bills since we all picked them i just flat out don't see that happening i think yeah, they could definitely win this game i am like i said i think this is this is my game of the year right here i think it's gonna be nuts but uh, this just has a feel for I, I think I think whoever wins this game is going to be the Super Bowl champion. Personally, I think it's going to be I'm going to be rooting for whoever, whatever team wins. I think it's going to be extremely exciting. And man, I am I'm just excited for this uh, cha- championship weekend. Is maybe the best weekend in sports. So I, I really think it's it's an underrated weekend. It's better than the Super Bowl, 100 percent in my opinion. I don't think it's even close because uh, the two games makes a big difference. And usually, honestly, the games are better and I'm more in tune with them. So I'm really excited to watch these games though, for sure. It's going to be incredible. 
I, I do think Roman has a point, though. Um, the Chiefs haven't blown out anybody this year, or really in a long time. They haven't just blown somebody out. Um, and true. if Mahomes plays, there's definitely a possibility that it's due, um, especially it seems like. I think the Chiefs are favored in terms of the betting lines, uh, but it's it's pretty close. Uh, and I see a lot of people picking the Bills because of the uncertainty with Mahomes. So there's there's a high possibility the Chiefs do exactly what they did last week. And people were like, hey, the Browns aren't that bad. Um they, they could do the same thing and just come out and smack the Bills. But hopefully you're right, Chris, that it is a more close game. And I, I will add, though, you said about the this being the best weekend in sports. I think the only better weekend is March Madness week one. Yeah. That's also a really I great agree. first weekend uh, in sports. But um, unless you guys have anything else you want to add, uh, we'll wrap this thing up. So once again, we are the Zone Defense Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, but also on Spotify and Twitter at Zone Defense Pod and search us on Apple Podcasts. Be sure to smash that like button um, and also check out our various other episodes. Um, we do these NFL episodes weekly. Um, we'll probably still do and be doing them through the off season. Um, talking about uh, the coaching hires, the draft fantasy previews, NFL regular season previews, all that stuff. So be sure to keep an eye out for all those. Um, and then Chris and I also do a weekly NBA show called the zone defense basketball hour. So be sure to check that out as well. Um, if you like the NBA and NFL, like we do, um, but also, Last thing, uh, drop a comment down below um, and let us know your picks for the conference championship uh, games. We love seeing your picks and predictions as well as what you think the Colts or the Rams will do at the quarterback position moving forward. But uh, that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. See ya.